Reread page 13. How should the reader's voice sound when mouse and rooster are talking? How do you know? In this lesson, you will learn how to use your voice to show differences in a character's point of view by connecting how the character is feeling and acting. Let's review. We're closely reading the folktale, The Rooster, the Mouse, and the Little Red Hen by Felicite Lefebvre. In this story, the rooster, mouse, and little red hen are captured by a big wolf who is determined to bring them back to little foxes to be eaten. Let's review what you already know about point of view. A character's point of view is what he or she thinks and feels. A character's point of view is often determined by paying attention to his or her talking words. Talking words are when characters in a story say something whether it is to another character or themselves. Those talking words are usually wrapped around quotation marks. Noticing these quotation marks helps you to identify when a character is saying something. When characters are talking, their voices change to match their point of view. For example, a character who is feeling angry would have an angry voice that might sound like low and gruff. And if a character later felt happy, he would use a happy voice that sounds higher and more cheerful. Today, we're going to be working on matching our reading voice to the voices of the rooster and the mouse. We're going to use these four steps to guide us. First, stop when you get to a character talking. <clears throat> Second, reread and ask, how is the character acting or feeling when she says this? What words tell me that? Third, think, how would a character acting or feeling this way sound? And fourth, make your voice match the feeling. Let's go back to our question from the rooster, the mouse, and the little red hen. Reread page 13. How should the reader's voice sound when mouse and rooster are talking? How do you know? I'm going to reread page 13. Let's zoom in on the text so we can read together. I'm going to read and stop when I get to a character talking. Here's a zoomed in version of the text so you can read along with me. I see quotation marks already. I bet there are talking words ahead. Rat, tat, tat. Rat, tat, tat. The fox knocked at the door. Ooh, some more talking words. Who can that be? Said the mouse, half opening his eyes. Even more quotation marks. Even more talking. Go and look for yourself if you want to know, said the rude rooster. And more. It's the postman, perhaps, thought the mouse to himself, and he may have a letter for me. So, without waiting to see who it was, he lifted the latch and opened the door. As soon as he opened it, in jumped the big fox with a cruel smile upon his face. No more quotation marks, so that's it for talking. Here's the no fox knocking at the door. That's more of a sound and we're thinking about rooster and mouse, so we can move on. Since I have so much talking on this page, I'll jot it down to keep track. Now that I've found the talking words, I need to read them again and ask, how is the character acting or feeling when she says this? What words tell me that? Here are our notes. Let's start with our first piece of talking. I'll reread. Who can that be, said the mouse, half opening his eyes. Hmm, how is mouse acting and feeling when he says this? Well, what words tell me how he's acting and feeling? Ooh, I noticed these words, half opening his eyes. Oh, right, mouse was sleeping and now he's half opening his eyes. He's not all the way awake. Mouse is feeling sleepy. Let's try it with our next piece of talking. Go and look for yourself if you want to know, said the rude rooster. How is rooster acting? What words tell me? Well, I'm thinking he's sounding a little mean. Go and look for yourself isn't a very nice thing to say. Oh, and this word, rude, helps me know. The text says rooster is acting rude. Let's move to our last piece of talking. It's the postman, perhaps, thought the mouse to himself, and he may have a letter for me. Hmm, how is mouse acting and feeling here? What words tell me that? 
Well, I don't see words like rude or half opening his eyes. I see that he's thinking to himself, hmm, I think Mouse is still probably feeling a little sleepy because he's just woken up. He was sleepy a few lines ago. So how is Mouse feeling when he says this? Mouse is still feeling sleepy. Now that we've figured out how each mouse and rooster are feeling when they talk on this page, we need to think, how would someone acting or feeling this way sound? On this first piece of talking, mouse feels sleepy. How would mouse sound? Hmm, mouse is acting and feeling pretty sleepy. I think that mouse would sound something like that. He should have a voice that's low and maybe half yawning one that sounds sleepy. Let's quickly think through the next bits of talking words. In this part, the rooster feels rude. Well, if rooster is acting and feeling rude, I think rooster should have a rude voice. He should start, sound sort of high and whiny. For this last piece of talking, mouse is still feeling a bit sleepy. So he should sound sleepy with that low voice and a half yawn. Now we get to make our voice match the feeling. Here's our page with our talking words again. I'll add in some reminders that tell me how my voice should sound while rereading so that my voice matches the feeling. So how should the reader's voice sound when the mouse and rooster are talking on page 13? Rat tat tat, rat tat tat, the fox knocked at the door. Oh, who can that be? Said the mouse, half opening his eyes. Go and look for yourself, if you want to know, said the rude rooster. It's the postman, perhaps, thought the mouse to himself, and he may have a letter for me. So, without waiting to see who it was, he lifted the latch and opened the door. As soon as he opened it, in jumped the big fox with a cruel smile upon his face. Today, we're able to make our voices reflect the character's point of view by following these steps. First, we stop when we get to a character talking. Second, we reread and ask, how is a character acting or feeling when she says this? What words tell me that? Third, we think, how would a character acting or feeling this way sound? And fourth, we make our voice match the feeling. In this lesson, you have learned how to use your voice to show differences in a character's point of view by connecting how the character is feeling and acting.